theater, in my own personal belief. When Wynn wrote that essay on a new American theater culture, I think he was working out that answer. And I think the country itself and the commerce uh, um, of America and those forces of you know other people finding out how to do not-for-profit theater, but also figuring out how to do it and do some plays that are going to bring in money. And, and uh, Wynne would not do that. He had play, playwrights come to him. But lest, yeah. lest you get the wrong idea that, that the American Place Theater was the place where Holocaust plays and Vietnam plays and Killer's Head plays um, happened, it was also a place of great humor for a lot of laughs to be had over the years of the American Place. Some of America's greatest humorists contributed work uh, to it. We saw uh, Bill Irwin's great show, uh, Regard of Flight, Taking Flight there. And I want to tell a quick story that when Wynn asked me to write uh, an oral history of the American Place Theater and of his life, I said, oh, well, we'll call it Wynn Place Show because it's Wynn Hammond and it's the American <laughs> Place and it's about shows. And that's when Wynn told me for the first time the story of his father and how important that phrase was in his life, and where those all of those things managed to come together. And one of the things I wanted to ask you, Wynne, is the big transition from St. Clement's, five, four or five blocks east, when you went to the new theater in 1970, 71, how did that change the theater? To me, it didn't. My heart was in what I was doing, and my heart stayed the same. And uh, the fact that it was a new structure, uh, that uh, didn't alter it at all. I kind of missed the funky atmosphere of St. Clement's, and uh, I missed my partner, the priest, uh, Sidney. Uh, but uh, it didn't really change it. What was remarkable, it's too complicated, but my father's printing plant was on 46th Street and 6th Avenue, under, under, under 6th Avenue, just like that theater. And uh, St. Clement's was on 46th. And 46, 46, 46 kept coming up. Why, I don't know, but there it was. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Very much. No, it didn't change very much. People wanted to look at it and thought it did, but it didn't. It did, it did. I did Ribbon plays. I did Sam Shepard plays. I didn't change. I did many African American plays. Nothing changed. Uh, but I did open things up. Why we didn't talk about it all in the documentary? I had an American humorous series. I did. And one of my people who was who appeared two times on the stage is here tonight, Calvin Trillin. He <laughs> was wonderful. Michael, can I ask you if you took yes. Wynn's character for the work that you do now? <laughs> that, uh, who's, that, who's asking? <laughs> Because Michael plays an acting teacher of some, oh, yeah. of some consequence and some repute. Uh, and and, and I, dare I say he's not anything like that. But yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know how much pot Wynn smoked. So, uh, <laughs> so it, uh, it becomes. There was a, you know, a, a lot of mem memories. <clears throat> I did certainly think about the uh, the kinder and more gentler side. And also, uh, Wynn always had a great sense of humor. I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, there, was a, there was a joyfulness uh, about it. Uh, it. It was not brain surgery, you know? And uh, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Plus, she met a lot of girls. <laughs> I, I did want to say that um, I, another theme that comes across so clearly in the film, uh, from the very beginning with, with, um, with Andre Bishop, uh, and, and was true to my research on 
um, Wynn, who now I've, I've known since, I think, 1967. Uh, every interview I did, the first words so often were, Wynn is a gentleman. <laughs> what came across over and over again, the lack of cruelty and the respect uh, for the dignity of the actor and the dignity of the, the young person who's trying to find his, his, his center as an actor, all of those things uh, that put him in contrast with those around him and before him and then that really made his work stand out in ways that as this film tells us so eloquently, we're only beginning to understand. And I think that's one of the great things about It Takes a Lunatic is um, the richness of Wynne's legacy is, is so vast and so deep. And, and here it is to look at. I couldn't believe how many photographs he had. <laughs> All to him in the Coast Guard. I don't know what you're doing in the Coast Guard, spending a long time taking pictures. <laughs> Uh, take a lunatic. I don't know, 50 years or not. I mean, even this is before the digital world. This is old-fashioned Sony <laughs> uh, Jeremy, uh, on the cover of the book, you had the rollicking life of Wynn Hanlon. It's available. Uh, and I said to Billy, well, what does he mean by rollicking life? Rollicking. And then I said, oh, we know what rollicking is. It's when we're in Nantucket and there's an old Buick and you seek out the worst dirt roads <laughs> and we're going back and forth like that. That's rollicking. <laughs> so I've accepted my life since then. I think uh, we have a couple of minutes to open it up to some questions, if we can. So, Jeremy, can I just add uh, something to what Michael was talking about? Um, uh, I want to acknowledge Martha Holmes. Martha Holmes was the American Place Theater staff photographer. Every picture. All of them. And um, we are very fortunate and privileged to be able to use these. And uh, I also want to acknowledge and thank the New York Public Library, the Performing Arts Library staff. Are they still here? Um, uh, the, the, the American Place Theater Company records uh, exist in the Billy Rose Collection at the Performing Arts Library. And I hope that scholars race to these records and to begin can, you know, researching and diving into them because there's things in there that no one's seen. Uh, and uh, these photos came right out of there. And uh, I have to thank uh, Terry and John Cochelle, and I have to thank Ann Holmes Waxman, who's here tonight, and I see you, uh, who is the daughter of Martha Holmes. And so we owe, we owe a great debt to Martha. So we have time for a couple of questions. Before we have the questions, may I say one more thing? Of course. <laughs> you saw my wife briefly in, in the film. She was a very wise woman and helped me so much. There wouldn't have been no career without her or Sandy Monster. But one time I was getting an award and she said, you know, uh, well, you just had the Oscars, and everyone says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't say thank you. I said, I don't, I don't know how we accept it. You know, don't. So I found myself saying, well, with great gratitude, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate very much, and Don and I, dragged out my response a lot. But, but finally I said, thank you, Bobby. <laughs> and, uh, 
came from a very deep source. Because without her, I wouldn't have had this family or anything. And why, so why I'm saying this now is, there are so many thank yous in my career and my life that you can't possibly list them. So I want you all to know, I am very grateful for what <laughs> I have met. Thank you. experimenting in the cathedral in Jacksonville. I've got a little community theater background, so I've been bringing that to ministry there and was encouraged. But are, but are you a lunatic? That, that's the question. Well, that's part of it. But um, but I came up for, for a few days uh, on a kind of continuing ed thing because I, I learned that there was St. Clement's and there's St. Luke's next door and then there's Riverside. I had no idea these were off-Broadway places that were housed in churches. Then today, uh, a whole series of events, and I found out about this. I mean, it's just amazing. I'm just wondering if Wynn has any advice for a, a, a churchman looking for that sweet spot between performing arts and the church, as he had found earlier with Sydney. Well, we did it every Sunday. I always look forward to it because Together, Sydney and I said, well, why don't we part of the Sunday service? So I'll give you a couple of examples. One of them is when the playwright Clifford Odets died. Uh, Sydney said, uh, I want to preach a sermon about Old Testament prophets of rebellion. I said, okay, we'll do a scene from the first scene from Waiting for Lefty is for right. <coughs> and from uh, the, the flowering peach, his last 